you all on behalf of the entire PG lecture coordinating team under the IAPSM eConnect. This is part of the PG lectures and we are moving ahead in this series. We are here once again with our distinguished faculty for today, Dr. Sumit Agarwal sir. Sir is currently working as scientist and program officer in the Department of Descriptive Research, ICMR headquarters, New Delhi. Sir is an accomplished public health professional with many years of experience in HIV AIDS, operational research in public health, sexually transmitted infections, validation of tools, etc. Sir is the pioneer in drone technology in public health in India. Sir is behind all the drone uh, uh, attempts by ICMR till now. Uh, he is a medical doctor with master's in preventive and social medicine, MD in PSM from Dr. VM GMC Solapur, Maharashtra. After his post-graduation, Sir had worked as an assistant professor in the Government Medical College Akola for a brief period of time and then Sir had joined ICMR as scientist. Before beginning, I shall repeat the sequence we wish to follow for today's session. Today's session will be speaker's presentation with PPT for half an hour to 40 minutes, followed by questions received through Google form as well as the current YouTube live and followed by closing of the session. So over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Santosh, for uh, this humble present, humble, uh, humbly by introducing myself and um, this is a great opportunity for me once again to presenting this uh, pioneer work at the national level platform and I'm thankful to you and Dr. Mili and all other working hard for this uh, e-connect session that is being conducted by IAPSM and uh, I'm also thankful for IAPSM for organizing these kind of lecture and uh, this actually these are the we can say as a translational things what we are seeing in public health what we learn in three years how to take these things forward how these things actually help um, in changing life of people introducing new technologies and many more things all these things have very 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 high public health impacts and this is the things which will keep motivated our newly doing postgraduate students and sr to do and learn things from these experience. Maybe uh, this is one of my ex example, but there are so many other examples which we are having every week. So, uh, so again, thank you. So now you just guide me how to like, uh, uh, what should we, I do or should I share my uh, PPT and should I start presentation or is there any starting point or uh introduction? Uh, sir, we are done with the introduction, sir. You can start sharing your PPT and start the presentation, sir. Okay. So you have to, I think, unshare this presentation. Uh, just a minute, sir. I'll, I'll stop sharing. Yes, sir. Okay. I hope uh, it is visible. Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. So uh, I will uh, not go in very much in technical session because in 40 minutes, you cannot teach anything. Just you can tell a story how we started and how we are doing. So it is just a experience sharing, more of experience sharing and how things start, small things start and they, they actually captures national uh, attention eventually if you are doing good so uh, so this is idrone we say it idrone basically it was introduced in during covid 19 pandemic period and it it is actually acronym acronym uh, what you can see here on the screen it's icmr drone response and outreach in northeast and uh, this hope from the skies this uh, the subtitle they came from the deliveries when we were doing in a very beautiful island of Manipur. So one people uh, said like, this is not a drone, this is a hope from the sky. So we like fetch this tagline from there. So this is I drone a hope from the skies. So basically it start with the story and story is that like in COVID-19 pandemic happened in India and everyone was facing 
things. So in November 2020, our uh, then time DG, Dr. Balram Bhargav called me one day and said, Sumit, uh, we have to deliver vaccine through drones. So it was very surprising for me because that time, that time there was no vaccine available in India. And, and and there was no drone available for vaccine delivery in India. So I was a little surprised. We have to deliver one thing which is not available by a vehicle which is also not available. So we are totally thinking hypothetically. Then we had a multiple discussion and we, DG sir said, he, okay, secretary said, no, no, by the time you will learn how to do it, we will be having vaccine. Because ICMR was already working on vaccine and we were aware like we will be having vaccines. So eventually in 16th, on 16th, January, 2021, I, uh, we ICMR received first vaccine dose. Meanwhile, uh, we were also working on protocols. So we explored so many agencies, like where we can get a drone, which can deliver vaccines. So we contacted DRDOs, army and so many other people. But then we con come into the contact with IIT Kanpur. Those who are from IIT Kanpur or those who, those who know IIT Kanpur, they have their airstrip, airstrip with, within their campus and they have aeronautics, uh, aerodynamics uh, division. And as being a doctor, medical doctor, so I'm totally, I was totally unaware, like what is this technical thing and how to use it for vaccine delivery. So we thought before implementing in a public health scenario, so it is good to have a proof of concept study because as ICMR being a research organization, so we don't implement anything directly without doing a feasibility or a proof of concept study. So we conceptualized this concept and we did uh, in IIT Kanpur. Further, it was extended to Manipur, Nagaland, blood bags, and recently it has been implemented in Keelong and then next month we are coming to Telangana and Karnataka. So this is brief story. So here you can see the airstrip, the drone, and uh, we are checking. So we did this study in November 7, 8, 7th, 8th November. And we did this very like very fast timeline conceptualization happened in November. We got all technical approval in December. We start developing the drone because that time there was no drone. We are talking about 2023 20, year back. So there was no drone available. So we actually designed this drone. We constructed this drone with IIT Kanpur. Uh, so they have one CD space company. So we designed this drone following the concept. We have to keep the technical things which we will discuss later. And the concept was that this drone was visual line of sight. So we say it VLOS. VLOS means Shadiwala drone, what we say is like people are seeing the drone and they are that is shooting. So that is called as a visual line of sight because you can see all the time the drone. So we conducted this thing. And from this slide, you can understand how. Uh, so these what we are seeing uh, the dummy vial vaccines. These are not actually a COVID-19 vaccine. So these are dummy vial vaccines. This was these was received by the Bharat Biotechs. We received it and we followed all the standard procedure, which is maintained by we establish a, a dummy PSC center and dummy uh, vaccine storage center. And we transport it in, in a way which is, uh, is SOPs are there. So we did in the same way and we transported it through the drone. We had multiple sorties. And after doing this study, we learned like how to keep drone, what is needed to maintain the temperature. Uh, what is the effect of temperature vibrations uh, on the vaccine vial? So many things we understand. We understood so many things. And after that, we thought, okay, we will do it now in plains of Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh because it is easy task to do in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh or Maharashtra because these are the flatlands. But when we come with this concept, what we did in IIT Kanpur and we went to ministry, and ministry said, okay, why you want to do it in Mani, like Uttar Pradesh or Madhya Pradesh? Because these are the easy location. If you want, if you want to do it as a public health, you have to go to most difficult terrain of India. So that is Manipur and Nagaland. So that is how we land up in Manipur and Nagaland. And here you can see this uh, picture one is showing. So this is the place is Loktak Lake. And this Loktak Lake is largest lake in northeastern region. And it is a sweet water lake. So, which is available there and we chose a very difficult part. So, there is there are, there is island in between. You can see there is island in between and this island we choose for delivery of vaccine because we thought if we can do it here, so we can do it anywhere. So, we uh, set very standard very high for us. We went um, 
northeast so this is uh, my team there and we met like national health mission there nhm people and we did collaboration we did all the approval technical approval ethical approval regulatory approval and you know uh, like how the situation is in manipur so it is not easy to fly in manipur so many times like army people caught us they kept us for four or five hours because they thought we are some kind of terrorist or activist which are using drone for some bombing or other activities but but actually the issues were sorted out so we choose this uh, karang island for delivery of vaccine and this become first vaccine delivery of asia where we delivered live vaccine to the land to island and here if you see this location so if you want to go to this location it takes two and a half two and a half like uh, around 150 minutes and by drone we were able to reach in eight minutes and this uh, island has population of three to four thousand so this is how we started with public uh, health implementation of real idea which we started in uh, iit kanpur so eventually we we covered so many things we i will discuss it uh, subsequently but we also did the training of healthcare workers we did a qualitative data collection field testing of delivery was also done and then after completion of manipur we also went to nagaland so also nagaland was more difficult even more difficult uh, difficult terrain because there is no valley area in in uh, Na nagaland in manipur in like uh, if you know like imphal vishnupur churachandpur these are the district which are valley area so you have easy access but in nagaland there is actually no valley area so you have to go to uh, all the hill to hill so we thought it is good opportunity to do all kinds of models which is available so land to island land to land land to foothills foothill to land valley to valley hill to valley and hill to hill so we did all kinds of combination and it was not just a demonstration study where we connected various pscs cscs district hospital regional hospitals and as i said this was not just a demonstration thing so we conducted it very scientific way and actually there are eight component of feasibility if you want to do feasibility at any point of time so there are eight components of feasibility and we thought like there are eight out of these eight component there are five component which we can do the study in this model so we did acceptability adaptation practicality integration and implementation so if i will explain so basically uh, our public health and community medicine people's understanding come here so why it is not feasibility just putting medicines and flying a drone so this is a very much easy and technical thing so when one engineer can do it but our roles comes as because here you are introducing a new technology so it is very important to understand perception and understanding of stakeholder so when i say stakeholder it doesn't mean those who are going to use the services but it also includes the beneficiaries it's also service providers it's also policy makers so we had multiple stage qualitative analysis with policy makers implementers health research grassroots level workers and beneficiaries so we checked whether like if you know example of opv so there are population pockets which were not taking vaccines because it may cause a sterility so acceptability of any new technology is very important in any public health scenario so we did acceptability study then adaptation like you are coming to a terrain which is very alien for normal services and you are bringing a drone so it is very important if they will say ki okay we don't know how to use drone how to integrate drone with the existing healthcare system so we developed training module and we trained them and we checked their assess uh, we which we did their qualitative assessment what is their apprehensions what is their uh, knowledge gap and other things so here we develop uh, training modules then third we are introducing a technology in a terrain which is actually very difficult in the diagram if you can see this image this image is looking very simple but actually this is a umma village it's umma village in Nag nagaland and here you can see a drone which is actually landing on the rooftop of the psc in this village there there is no flat land where you can deliver a vaccine or by landing so we have to identify a location we have to identify a your various use case scenarios where we used the local available resources to uh, make it more practical then integration like integration is very important because whenever you are developing a new thing new concept 
so it it will have a financial implication if you are developing a parallel system which will replace the older one or which will not include the existing system so that would be a parallel system and that will have very exist very high cost financial burden on the system so we thought it should be integrated with the healthcare workers there should be no new staff required so whatever we did it was used by the existing healthcare worker here you can see the healthcare workers in this is uh, in again in nagaland so uh, where at the psc healthcare worker is uploading loading the medications and the samples and everything so so this was done by the local healthcare worker it is not done by us and then implementation the real part come with the implementation all whatever we are talking is theory unless we implement it so we did impl implementation of this thing so in all if i do a glimpse of overall activities so more than 80 sorties were conducted and there was first time when in when we delivered land to island uh, live vaccines longest distance we covered was bokukchung to twinseng in nagaland and which actually has a 80 km distance just 80 km so it uh, takes 8 to 10 hours to reach there and when we were going there so we, there was a breakdown of vehicle also so actually we took 10 to 12 hours to reach there but by drone services we were able to reach medical uh, supplies in just uh, 30 minutes or so so you can see the difference like 8 hours versus 30 minutes <coughs> so we as i mentioned we connected multiple psc csc and district hospital so we connected 20 centers five district we trained 70 healthcare workers we conducted in depth interviews of 35 officials from healthcare workers and it got immense media and worldwide uh, coverage so like how india has done so in all we we did uh, 846 km hours of like 8 846 km of distance covered by drones in 13 hours and it was equal to 32 kilometers of the road distance and which takes usually 94 hours in normal speed. So after this thing, like uh, government of India identified uh, 12 stories from the India, which actually helped India to uh, cure or maybe control in COVID-19. So out of 12 stories, so this story, what we did in Manipur and Nagaland was identified one of the biggest achievement of India during COVID time. So I got opportunity to feature with this uh, uh, documentary, which was released by Prime Minister Modi. And here Bill Gates, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Health Minister, and our Secretary and Adhar Punawala, Ila Krishnan. So very eminent personalities was there. And I got opportunity and I was lucky enough to be featured in this opportunity. And our work was pioneer and it was included in this documentary. So after completion of this activity, this was not end of it. Usually it happened government system, like people do some activities and they stop. They, uh, we did not replicate it further. And people think like what we are doing, just we are transporting, putting things into the drone and transporting from one point to A to B. So what is new and what is novel in it? So each study, what we did has some unique proposition. So, here, if you see the IIT Kanpur, first time we conducted the feasibility study, which was not happened in India. And it, it was actually a proof of concept study. In Manipur and Nagaland, what we did, it was the beyond the visual range. So what we did in IIT Kanpur was VLOS, visual line of sight. But here, it was beyond the visual line of sight. So you cannot see drone after 30, 40 uh, seconds. So it will fly far away and you cannot see the drone. So here we did a very different uh, permutation and combination. And after that, we conducted a study in Delhi NCR and where we did a transportation of blood bags uh, compared to conventional method. So here, unique thing is not putting blood bag and transporting the blood to the point A to point B. But here actually we did a study on the how uh, hemolysis has conducted, like what is the effect on sterility, what is the effect of biochemical component, hemolysis component, so other other, so many biological components we studied here. And recently we did our study in Lahore and Spiti. So that is actually at the 15,000 feet and minus 10 degrees centigrade. So we conducted this study at this height. And here we also had a great experience when we, we were flying at this height, maybe probably first time for healthcare delivery. Usually 
army people go there for staying, but there is no nothing related to healthcare deliveries. So we did deliveries as this minus 10 degree and 15,000 feet. Now, uh, so these all activities has been completed. Now, next month, we have come, uh, we have collaborated with state TV program and, and we are doing a next study where we are putting uh, medications, uh, DOTS medication into the drone. And these drones are delivering medications to the PSCs. And from returning, while returning, they will pick up the samples, the sputum sample. So this study we are doing in Telangana. And uh, what is so special about this study? Till now, everything was done as a part of trial, part of concept note. But here we are doing integration with the existing program and actually real implementation would be there where it will go long run in six months or one year and so so and now we have also started conceptualizing how we can transport organ and cornea in subsequent time so basically uh, once we completed all these things so we started four more studies as i explained uh, one study was ex started in Keelong, which we were targeting high altitude and low temperature. One study was targeted on the blood, blood bag transportation, where we did like transportation of blood and effect of hemolysis uh, on the like by the vibration, temperature, high altitude, and everything. And feasibility a study, as I have been explained, explaining like how we have collaborated with the state TV program and we are doing. And, and the fourth study in this uh, sequence we conducted was, we are conducting in next month is uh, doing collaboration with Kasturba Medical College, that is KMC Manipal. And here what we are doing, we are transporting cryopreserved pathological, oncopathological sample. So what is special about it? When you are doing surgery at secondary level, so you don't know like whether it is malignant or not. So you have to plan second surgery. But if you are able to transport these samples to the pathological center, whether where they can identify whether this is a malignant issue or non-malignant issue. So if you are able to do this kind of examination during the surgery, you would able to save another surgery. So the surgery excision may be happened in one go only. So this also we are trying to do, do this thing. So uh, this is more detail about the blood packs delivery, what we did and how we did it. And this is more about uh, drone-based deliveries in Keelong, what we conducted recently in Manipur and Nagaland. And this was very difficult terrain where we, uh, like there are only one regional health hospital that is situated in, uh, one regional hospital situated in Keelong. There is one CSC, that name is Sansha, and eight PSCs are there. So we actually flew for all these locations and there were so many difficulties we faced during the uh, these trials so recently uh, just we con we conducted this Keelong trial on 19th october and after 6 or 7 days our work reached to honorable prime minister and he also appreciated this thing so our this work was quoted recently by Prime Minister Modi ji, and this thing was tweeted by Honorable Health Minister Panchuk Mandaviya ji. So <coughs> this is the power of public health. Even though you are doing work in very far flung areas, but if you are doing a thing which actually makes an impact on national level, so definitely it will reach to a Prime Minister or our. Uh, health minister definitely and this activity took around six to seven days to reach to prime minister and definitely it's made impression on that so uh, there are so many details but i'm showing some pictures how it was covered so here you can see like we had uh, some breakdown of uh, truck when we were wandering in nagaland so we have to took uh, like uh, breakdown of vehicle so we took a lift in some truck and we were just uh, reached there in uh, 24 hours or so. It took a lot of time there 
and frequently our activities whatever we are doing it being tweeted and recognized by the honorable health minister and the people and it has been also acknowledged very much uh, by the media and other things and these are the beautiful pictures of uh, loktak lake and uh, uh, karang island which is there in manipur and we were also like uh, witness this hornbill festival that is being conducted every year in nagaland so these are few many things uh, which uh, we did there we did the uh, night time flight we also meet local people we also met like so many things it was very interesting so this uh, paper shows like whenever we were in nagaland so every day there was news on us and we were reading uh, our news in front on front page in nagaland every day so this was very proud feeling for us when we were doing this thing so this is all our initiative what we are doing with drones and we are thankful for our partners drone partner all state governments so so this is a small presentation in interest of time i have kept it short so now i um, i am handing over in you to santosh for further discussion and communication over to you thank you so much sir it's a great presentation sir really superb presentation and uh, you have taken us through all your experiences actually you have taken us from to 2020 and you brought us to 2023 through this presentation superb sir really superb sir uh, and thank you so much for showing us manipur and nagaland as well through your presentation so i would say like one more thing so this is not my key work so this is a part of research that i actually we have to contribute our time so in this i don't task force we i just contribute around 20 to 25% of my time so my rest of the time is uh, shifted somewhere else in more other activities so can we know those activities also like where so, yes definitely there are implementation research activities and then uh, uh, like we are also working in sti sexually transmitted infections because all infectious diseases are reducing but sti is the only group which is increasing so i am very much focusing on uh, stis and the uh, hiv so these are and also my interest of work is more towards transgender msm and commercial sex workers so those are actually marginalized population so these are the few other areas so all seems to be little bit orthodox areas and little challenging areas but when i reached icmr so these were the area which was only remaining and and very less people were addressing these areas so i took all these challenges and we are trying to make a difference on these areas so superb sir superb uh, actually recently i have done uh, one uh, implementation research course from who sir the famous one that mooc on double uh, implementation research and uh, from your ppt i i mean i have uh, uh, refreshed all the lessons which i learned in that implementation research really awesome sir uh, sir uh, coming to like uh, some questions which i received through whatsapp as well as uh, through the google forms and all uh, first i'll ask you my question uh, through the i mean uh, through your journey which i thought like i should ask you uh, uh, sir uh, you i mean you are a main person in writing this i drone guidelines and drone related guidelines for india yes. sir what are your experiences while writing this so actually before writing this we have to experience everything actually uh, when this program started so i told you we started with kanpur and then government centers you have to go to Nag- nagaland and manipur real fact is that i was aware there is seven states in northeastern state but what is their actual geographical location i was not aware when they told me ki sumit you have to go to nagaland and manipur then i actually searched the net and i checked whether is actually the manipur in nagaland so this this was a like ignorance of mine which was never i tried to resolve but when i saw like this is nagaland and this is manipur and then we have to go there and this was the time of uh, covid 19 so we went there and whatever we learned we whatever we felt we were documenting every day so i was there for 6 months in manipur and nagaland and nagaland 
is a very beautiful land very generous people are there very helping people are there but i don't know there is some kind of fair like people if you will say like going to nagaland okay why you are going nagaland it is very difficult land you will see the tribes and all everything but i i saw i felt like most beautiful people most generous people are there in nagaland even like manipur people don't like to go to nagaland and my family was saying ki job zaruri nahi hai jaan zaruri hai why you are going to nagaland but i said no no i will go and we were recording so whatever guidelines we have released so it is entirely not on our expertise but it is based on our challenges what we were facing every day and there was just four people there from here and we, we were just having support of phone so every day we have to meet cm health secretaries collector csc's grassroots level worker and beneficiaries so we were our mentor and we were our worker so uh, four people we were divided ourselves like in four or two or three groups as per need and we were having discussion then we were having discussion at night every night at 11 pm we used to meet and we have to plan like what we will do next day what is our challenges we were mentioning all these things we were noting down all these things when we completed all these experience in 6 months so there was different kinds of challenges we faced in terms of uh, operational challenges implementation challenges regulatory challenges geographical challenges food related challenges i am uh, entirely like totally vegetarian person so i had a very difficult time there being spending 6 month uh, uh, in manipur and nagaland but people as i said very generous and they helped me ki yes you eat vegetarian and uh, climate is different there is no transportation available so there are so many difficulties if you will go but we enjoyed it a lot and out of these experience this guidelines came out wonderful sir i wish you you write a book on that sir i'll definitely buy that and i'll read it so documentary is already out <laughs> yeah so so usually happens like documentaries came later and book come first and uh, i would say like this has been covered by every media international in india uh, from times of india telegraph so every media group has covered it and you will search on internet you will go stories so we'll hope we'll do more it is just beginning of a thing and our vision is to like this is not only health related thing but drones has power to revolve like evolve everything like when india has introduced computer so it's generated lots of job employment services in each sector so each field similarly drones has capacity to do similar kind of work it will generate employment it will have pilots maintenance sale so many things so it has a similar kind of power and it has been identified one of the five technologies which will change uh, the world in upcoming century so we hope for better and we are trying to contribute our part what we can do with our work so that is all super sir super uh, sir sir coming to the question sir uh, so first question is uh, for example as part of some study uh, i mean part of some uh, medical study if they if someone is planning to uh, use the drones let us suppose to deliver vaccines or to deliver some sputum samples or something yes. <clears throat> and in the pathway if there is any railway station or if there is any bus station is there so can they do it or is it not possible so there is no criteria related to bus station or railway station but the government has defined drone fly zones in three categories red zone yellow zone and green zone so if you are in green zone so no matter what is there you can fly definitely there should be no uh, army stations or some police stations where they are doing so if there is nothing related to national security so you can fly in green zone in yellow zone and red zone i would suggest there is a recommendation not to fly because if you want to fly then you have to coordinate with airport authority of india atc air traffic control local army local administration and so many other people so many other restrictions are there and what we do actually when we flew in like different locations so we have flew into the red zone also green zone also and yellow zone also 
but when we were doing in yellow zone so we have to coordinate with the army people uh, deputy commissioner collectors so many people we have to coordinate and even though we are flying in green zone so we always inform local administration because uh, if you are flying a drone which is if administration is not aware so it will be a difficult time for them also so better to inform local administration through a letter and local police station local health because it is again a flying object which may if in case of emergency or accident it may cause damage to the population so we also keep ready our health services ready we also inform them so we try to follow all these of sops on guidelines and these guidelines you can check what the what guidelines we have released from icm or okay sir uh, so from where uh, we can get uh, whether the place belongs to green zone red zone or yellow zone so there is website uh, so like sky map is there so if you put a drone sky map so it will give you a, it is a site of dgca director general general of civil aviation so they maintain a site and actually there is very simple criteria if you are near a airport or any stop where drone uh, where helicopters or flight flew so if it is in 8 km of radius of that uh, like building so it comes in red red zone so if you are in 12 km 8 to 12 km area so it is in yellow zone if you are beyond 12 km of uh, periphery of that uh, airport or some helicopter port so it comes in under the green zone provided there should be no army training station army ammunition factory or some national importance institute should not be there so so this is overall just broader criteria and also there are different types of drone nano drone micro drone or small drone so for public health purposes up to small drones categories are allowed so these drones uh, are of weight of up to 25 kg so what i'm saying in meaning is it is it is not it can carry 25 kg but the weight of drone machine should not be more than 25 kg so this kind of categories of drone comes into the smaller category of drone and these category of drone is allowed to fly in green zones but heavy drones uh, after like small there is small minor drones major drones mega drones so these uh, the other categories are reserved for the defense purposes or government of india so we cannot use for flying of other categories of drone so you can get it online okay sir sir you told the distance criteria of 8 kilometers 8 to 12 kilometers and more than 12 kilometers so this is for point a or point b or the path no so like i will give you example if you have uh, you are in mangalgiri now right so yes, it sir. must be having some nearby airport so yes. airport has its own defined boundaries when you say like this is the airport so from the boundary of airport you will calculate in a radius format so you will go straight 12 km and your drone path should not cross this area if you are calculating so if you are uh, drawing a area so it will have a radius of this like in center part there will be airport and you will calculate 12 km around it so this zone the full entire zone will become a green zone red yellow zone or red zone and your drone should not cross this zone when you are flying so you should bypass this you have to So you you cannot cross this area. Reason behind this is that, like when planes land, so before eight kilometers, their distance is very low. Like their altitude is very low. So and there is defined criteria at what level you can fly a drone. So you can fly a drone up to four hundred feet only. One twenty meter is the limit. So above that you cannot fly a drone. So in yellow zones and red zones, so these are the altitudes where plane and drone can clash so that is why these criteria has been set up so because there is limit for fly to drone at 120 meter and in these red zone and green zone flight may be at the level of 120 meter because they are landing that time so to avoid these clashes these criteria has been defined and there yes. are drone drone rules 2021 so if one is going through these drone rules and our guidelines they will get a fair idea of it 
clear sir very clear uh, sir uh, you already covered in your previous answer the what all permissions has to be taken to fly in the green zone as well sir can right. you repeat those uh, permissions which has to be taken for flying in the green zone so first first thing is that like how you are doing your thing i will before coming to a uh, permissions you need some kind of some more things like if you are doing as a study so first you should have one technical approval technically your study should be sound second thing you should have ethics approval this is very important so you should have ethical approval on the study then third comes as a regulatory approval so regulatory approval will come in form of your study design should be in compliant with the drone rule 2021 first thing second thing you have to inform local administration if you are informing collector so collector will disseminate this information to uh, respective taluka or tehsil which is whichever is there and it is our responsibility also to inform local police and local health authorities to like we are doing this so these are the minimum requirement which is needed in green zone so apart from this nothing is required but you have to be careful like once we were in manipur we were not aware we were we were just near to maratha light infantry so there is light infantry named Malat, maratha life infantry 5 so fifth unit of mli was there and we were flying some near to their area we were not informed uh, informed them because we were not aware they were in hidden format so they actually caught us with the guns and all and they thought we are some kind of doing some mishap and we are planning for some kind of bombing on some terroristic activities so then we were having all the permission from the authorities so they we explained them and then they released our drone and everything so you have to be careful if you are in a zone where conflicts are more so you have to inform the local uh, army people and the other authorities also so mostly it is not required but if you are in like if you are somewhere where city has cant area so cant area then you have to inform the cant people also like we are going to fly drone because they you don't know whether they are keeping their ammunitions whether they are doing training so these areas are restricted so you have to be careful on that part okay sir uh, sir in the presentation you told that uh, one has to be ready with the medical uh, thing also for uh, if, uh, if i mean uh, if any under any circumstance if the drone uh, falls or if the drone uh, uh, destroys in middle in the path and all so uh, are there any instances uh, maybe during the trial versions or maybe not even india maybe uh, outside india what you have read that uh, uh, like uh, somewhere the drone got uh, uh, destroyed or something like that sir yes so actually drone is nothing but a smaller form of flight so if even though flight technology has been evolved very much but again you will see every year there are 40 to 50 flight crash are happening right so this technology drone technology cannot be devoid of these incidences so there is always a incident like where they these are falling and these are very dependent these are not weather weather resistance so if there is rain rain and their capacity is very less if there is some air windy area is there so they cannot would withstand so they will fall it down or if unfortunately or like some bad things happen so it may fall on population so in india it has not happened yet but yes so that is why it is necessary to be ready with administration it is necessary to be ready with the health services and you should be aware like what is the measure you have to follow if it is falling down if it is falling down on water body then it is fine you will recover it but if it is falling down on a residential area then you have to maybe you need to pay some kind of insurance things so it is also necessary to ensure whether you are drawing uh, flying a drone it should be third party insurance so drone to jayega at least if it is falling on some car it will uh, like filled by the insurance company the third party insurance is very important although it seems very uh, technical not technical administrative issues but when you will do in an implementation you have to take care of all these things nice sir nice sir now i'll come to the questions which i got in whatsapp uh, all these questions till now are my questions 
from the lecture and all. <laughs> no, sir. From the lecture and from the interactions, I got this question, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, sir, the question which was asked, the first one is, can drones be used for observer administration of dots? No. So, so you have to understand, like, what is observation in dots administration? You do it while you are in room. You cannot do in open. You drone cannot fly in, in into the room. And when you are taking a medications, to a, like, and one healthcare worker has to observe, like he is taking medication. Although it doesn't happen, it is happens with the, with the first dose only. So it cannot happen. Like it cannot observe. For that, you have simpler techniques, CCTV camera. You can put, you can see by eyes. So, so you can not put drone everywhere, but yes, drone can be used in transportation of dot therapy and pickup of sputum sample because you don't know when you will get a sputum sample. So your district headquarters is having one drone. So your PSCs, those who don't have DMCs or TUs or experts, gene experts, so they can use drone and they, they can pick up the sample from the PSCs. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh what will be the role of drones in normal vaccine delivery? Uh, not COVID vaccine. They are asking about normal routine immunization vaccine delivery. So actually, it is uh, not about delivering the vaccine. Definitely, drone can deliver vaccine. But issue is that the cost effectiveness. Because if you are going, like if you are in Rajasthan kind of area, and you there is roads are empty, roads are available good conditions are roads roads are there so you will reach there by a car or by auto or by a bike just in 10 minutes within a cost of 50 rupees or 20 rupees if you want to fly a drone so it will cause you uh, some 200 rupees per kilometer or so you have to develop infrastructure and it will take a time so it is not like a drone can deliver a vaccine or not so drone definitely can deliver a vaccine but drone has Drone will never replace the conventional method. It will just supplement or addition to the conventional method. But like I gave you example of Mokokchun to Twinsen, which actually just 80 kilometers, right? But it takes 8 to 10 hours to reach there. But in this situation, if you are delivering vaccine, if you are transporting routine vaccine to the other side, then definitely drone has utility. So drone has capacities but you have to identify proper use case scenario where it should be cost effective or cost benefit so in both term maybe long term effects are there so maybe you can see the cost benefit analysis you can do uh, in long term but for uh, like cost effectiveness is also needed to run it long term okay sir uh, can drones be used for support to supervision of health worker Again, what healthcare worker is doing in room, you cannot observe. For that, you have different techniques. Telemedicine, you have CCTV cameras, you have. So healthcare worker is coming to duty. Definitely, you can use GPS for that. So there is no need to like use a drone. But, but drone has their own limitation. It cannot enter your room. If one is coming to hospital, but he is not coming... He is coming to hospital, but he is not doing work, but sitting in the room. So what drone can tell you? Drone maximum can tell you he has come to hospital, but what he is doing. So you can monitor, but again, it is not a good case, good use case scenario for it. Okay. What is the role of drone in disaster management? Yes. Though this is very important. And like I have told you one thing where we uh, did the study of blood bag transportation. So in disaster management, there are multiple, in multiple ways drone can be used as a supply of essential food, water, this is one thing. Surveillance is the second thing. And delivery of emergency medications is the third thing. And if you have defined path, like you in Bhuj, there was an earthquake and there was deficiencies or like lacuna of like, uh, of blood and platelets and so many things. So, so at that time, if you draw this is not available or in Uttarakhand, like happened in um, like uh, pilgrim places, they happened like because of heavy rains and everything. So you can transport blood, emergency medication, anti-snake venom, streptokinase. So there are so many things which can be transported. 
so disaster management definitely it has some defined role but again if you are not prepared before the disaster management you have not jotted down your paths you have not checked the terrain you have not developed the command center for drone so you cannot take a drone as a ready measure a like uh, okay today today we are having disaster management and we have to fly a drone to one place because drone need a place to land and it doesn't have eyes so you have to do calibration in advance you have to develop kml file in advance so what is you know the disaster cycle and disaster management principles so you have to prepare it before if you are prepared before hand with the drone technology then definitely it has a very important role to play in disaster nice sir uh, sir you told that uh, uh, drones are you can be used not only for transportation but uh, for the other things as well can you uh, i mean tell a bit more about that sir so i will give you example of a uh, kilong kilong is a place in lahol in spiti and this place is uh, situated at the tibet border right and the altitude here is uh, minus 10000 10000 matlab above 10000 maybe you have heard name of atal tunnel after like manali if you will go hmm. beyond further so there is atal tunnel and after that atal tunnel the district of lahol and spiti will start and the first center will come as a kilong kilong is the first center and altitude there is minus uh, temperature is minus 10 to 15 degree centigrade and altitude is 10000 to 11000 right so what is the use case scenario when we went there we conducted a study last month and we thought we will be using drone for supply of medicines in these pscs when there is no fall but we went there we realized there is no utility of drone for deliveries of routine supply because the population of places is very less and they can enumerate what the people will face the problem and they store all the medication for 6 months so they have very good storage facility even though your center is disconnect with the district headquarter or other hospital they have their supplies for 6 months so basically there is no use of drone in that situation but when we did a qualitative assessment we conducted a interviews in depth interviews then we realized in month of november and december many people have problem of cough and roads are blocked because of snowfall and there is no vehicle which is going to the district headquarters so they are able to collect sputum sample but these sputum sample cannot be transported to the district headquarter or dmc center or tu center where they can make a diagnosis of tuberculosis so even though they have sample they have suspected case but they don't know whether to initiate therapy or not because they don't have confirmatory diagnosis right so and they are not able to transport so in this kind of use case scenario they can use drone so this is one use case scenario then we visited a one place named jhalma 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 is a a uh, very difficult uh, psc and when we were at zalma then uh, the, their nm was telling us sir you see in the front that there is a village and it is just nearby but when i have to visit this village for routine activities or surveys or meeting with asha worker and the delivery of vaccines and other things it's usually it should take just uh 20 to 50 minutes 15 minutes 20 to 30 minutes because it is very near by just 2 km but when there is snow fall then valley is there it's fell down with the ice and all snow and she it, it takes 4 to 5 hour to reach there so she is not able to deliver all the supplies to that peripheral village so this is one use case scenario then third use case scenario we identified like if you are in places place like you know there are so many immunoglobulins anti snake venom streptokinase uh, anti poisons anti dot for poisons so and blood bags so you cannot keep all these things are essential but you cannot keep all these things at bed, various pscs but if some case come in manipur nagaland arunachal pradesh or any difficult terrain of a uh, orissa or bhubneshwar where very high density jungles are there so these psc does not have access to these uh, medicines or vaccines or things so 
in these these scenarios you can use drone to supply these things to the pscs or sub center because you cannot store all these 10000 things at psc so you can develop a hub at central position which has all kind of medication if needed these medications may be transported to the psc with the help of drone because sometimes time is precious like you need something streptokine is 3 hours blood bags in 30 minutes so if you are not delivering these things in stipulated time so there will be no saving of life or if there is poisoning case you need a anti poison anti dots for poison pam atropin everything at the immediately so drone can be used in these situations awesome sir awesome uh, sir uh, one request from all my, all our viewers i mean i am asking from on their behalf sir if you can share the uh, documentary link we will share it in the uh, youtube as the first comment the description sure. part we will share we will share definitely yes sir yes sir and we will also share uh, our both the guidelines and training module which we have developed and recently a paper has been uh, published also in frontiers so where we have listed down all the implementation challenges it is kind of process paper if someone is going through this process paper definitely he will learn a lot how to do it so that one also sir please yes, uh, share we'll the share, link we'll share thank you sir thank you so much sir and uh, <clears throat> it was a wonderful session sir and i'm sure it will help our audience in understanding uh, the impact of drones in public health Thank and uh, sir this is from my end sir hope you be graced as a drone man of india soon uh, sir uh, coming to the closing of the session uh, uh, this session would not have been possible without the diligent efforts of the iapsm lecture series team above everything we thank each and every participant without whom this session would not have this this much fruitful we encourage all the participants, all the YouTube viewers to become member of IAPSM if you are yet to become one. Also, if you wish to be notified of the sessions ahead, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, we will meet again next fortnight with yet another interesting topic for discussion. Until then, happy learning. Goodbye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And uh, you can share my email ID. With them if someone uh, actually it is not just uh, uh, conducting a study but capacity building at various level is very important and we really encourage people to do more studies at their identify local use case scenarios and promote it because it's also part of Atmanir Bharar and Modi ji board also wants to make India as a hub for drone technology so this time we should not follow follow the countries but countries should follow the India in this scenario. So this is one great opportunity to us. And definitely what use case scenarios, what we have discussed, there are much more things what we can do with the drone technology in different scenarios. So thank you once again for inviting me and uh, allowing me to present my work in this. So it's collaborative effects, efforts from all of my team. So thanks to them also. Thank you so much, sir. And we will definitely share your email ID as well, sir, as you had mentioned. Sure. Yes, sir. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Sir. Maybe I sign out? Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, I can sign out. Thank you. Yes, sir.